to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellsbury Pool. We're going to be live for a little while on online tonight. Oops, there we go. Uh, and um, <coughs> welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first time you found us. You can find us at ggechurch.co.uk or on YouTube at Greater Grace Evangelical Church or on Facebook at GGE Church page. So uh, plenty of ways to find us keep in touch if you can see us and hear us tonight please leave us a like a comment a reaction a gif a wave uh, uh, whatever you decide uh, just so that we can uh, know that people are watching and able to hear us and see us good so those are the introductions um the now the announcements uh, we have a midweek service on a wednesday at 7 30 which is also online and then uh, prayer on a Thursday night. Be praying really, particularly for this season, uh, for Ukraine and for the whole situation there, uh, as well as other issues that are going on long term as well. Now, um, next weekend, usually I say to you, come and join us and meet with us at Backford. That we will be uh, there at eleven o'clock next. Uh, Sunday morning. Next weekend we will not be uh, purely and simply because we are going to go down to uh, London. Um, we're going to visit one of our Greater Grace churches in London. Uh, so please, if you would like to come with us, um, get in touch within the next week. If you aren't able to join with us there, um, I'm sure we'll try and put some live link to it online there they also record their services so we'll try and endeavor to do it that way uh, for next week so uh, just a, a little heads up uh, and then after that back to normal as far as i know there aren't any uh, other uh, anomalies eurocon will be coming up as well um, in warsaw poland which is uh, our european conference Again, sadly, it looks like we probably aren't going to be able to go there just because of the travel restrictions. But um, we will be watching online, and if you would like to watch with us online, again, we'll give you details of maybe how we can do that. Uh, we're hoping maybe as a church to watch some of it together. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that near other time. Okay, uh, now let's do this. Let's pray. Let's give this time to the Lord. Let's uh, trust Him with every detail and let's just seek his face in prayer now Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord we worship you now and we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness we thank you for your gentleness Lord Lord we want to ask particularly again this evening that you would touch uh, the situation in the Ukraine Lord we pray for those that are fighting for their lives, fighting for their country. We pray for those that are trying to resist invasion. We pray for those that are refugees that are traveling and uh, maybe facing an uncertain future. We think of people who have lost their homes, lost their loved ones, lost family members. We pray for your comfort and your peace, Lord, there. Your divine intervention there, Lord. We pray for uh, protection against uh, harm as well, Lord. We think of our friends, uh, our brothers and sisters uh, from the Greater Grace Churches in uh, Cherkasy, in Kiev, in Lviv, in Odessa. And we just join with them in praying for the situation. We pray particular protection on uh, individuals, those maybe that have chosen to defend their nation and those that are uh, seeking to minister life to the situation Lord we pray that you just protect each one guide strengthen and touch Lord now Lord we ask your hand upon each one and Lord we pray that you would turn the whole situation around we pray also for uh, the uh, authorities in Russia to have a change of heart we pray also for uh, Putin to see the, the foolishness of this enterprise 
that it can have no good end, either for Russia or for Ukraine. And Lord, we pray that you would just cause people to see sense, uh, protect each one, Lord. We think of uh, the many Russians that are not supporting this, Lord, and we pray that you would protect them also, Lord. And we pray for uh, leaders of other countries, our own nation, uh, and Western nations, NATO particularly, Lord, as they seek to have the right response, Lord. It's all very well to stand back and say, oh well, Ukraine is not a member of NATO, so we don't have to defend them. But Lord, we pray for morality, human goodness, to dignity, honour to prevail. Lord, if something should be done, Lord, we pray that you would just really give deep wisdom to those in positions of leadership at this time, Lord. Guide now, we pray. Lord, your perfect will, your sovereign will, uh, is there, Lord. We, uh, we seek it, Lord. And we pray for deep wisdom for each one now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so tonight we're going to continue on the uh, subject from this morning. We um, will read from Second Samuel chapter 5. And we'll start the reading at verse 20. It says, And David came to Baal uh, Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies before me as a breach of the waters. Therefore he called the name of the place Baal Perazim. And there were and there they left their images. And David and his men burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord and said, uh, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over and against the mulberry trees and let it be when thou hearest the sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees that then thou shalt bestir thyself and then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines and David did so as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until they come to Gaza. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just think of the situation that we've mentioned already in Ukraine, Lord, your peace there. But we also think of many friends and body members that need your touch at this time, Lord. We think of uh, Lisa and Tony for healing there, Lord, for both of them, Lord. Particularly, Lord, thank you for uh, good news uh, from the doctors for both of them, Lord. But we pray that you would cover their situations. We pray for Supani as well, Lord, particularly after the, the loss of her mother, Lord. And we pray that there would be a way for her to get home to Thailand uh, in the near future, Lord, cover her sister and brother and sister-in-law and each member of the family there that is affected by this, Lord, and friends and different wives of this season. Comfort, Lord, we pray. Minister your life, Lord, as well. Touch for Jane as well for healing there, Lord, and strengthening. And for many of us, Lord, that need your touch for Ruby's grandson, for different ones. Minister life, Lord, again. We pray. Bless our trip to London next week, Lord. We pray as well that you would cover every detail of it, Lord. And minister your life, 
touch now, Lord, we pray. Anoint with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the words that we read, Lord, but we are nothing without your, your Spirit, without your life. We need your anointing with truth, with honour, with life, with love, with compassion from your Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, yes, we were talking this morning about being close to the Spirit of the Lord. Listening for instruction. Involving God in the decisions. This is what we see here from David. Uh, he could have gone out to battle. He's won a one battle already. He could have just said, well... I did well there, I'll just go and do the same thing again. But he didn't. He went to the Lord and he inquired of the Lord. And uh, there's a couple of points that maybe we'll come back on tonight with a slightly different angle on this story. Um, first of all, the, going back to the first verse that we read uh, about... Uh, David's reaction to his first victory, uh, he says there in that verse 20, uh, The Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies before me as a breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of the place Baal Perizim, which means a breach, I think. Um, but, uh, Think about that for a moment. David's won a victory. Uh, remember, David is a king. Or uh, he, yeah, he's 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 king of Israel. He's a leader, political leader. Think about that today. When a political leader gets. Uh, a great success, what do they usually do? Bask in the glory of it, don't they? This is why our government has been so successful. This is why, you know, we are, we are you know, this is, it's all down to me, basically. But actually, this is not what David says at all, is it? He gives all the glory to God and says, actually, the Lord has come through for me. The Lord has actually come through for me, like like a, a breach. And I love that picture that He gives of God's provision there, because He says, you know, it's like a breach of waters. Imagine this: a dam bursting. That is the picture that uh, David gives of God's faithfulness. Uh, like the dam has burst open, and the water has poured out and flooded the whole area wow that's quite a graphic picture isn't it uh, of, uh, of God's faithfulness, of God's power of God's intervention but this is the glory that, God, that David gives to the Lord for his victory over the Philistines it's like well you know, well I did it myself I, I fought hard and I didn't know he says no, God came through and when God comes through it's like this waterfall. It's like this flooding. It's like this overabundance of life that comes out. Uh, God did it. His presence filled the place. His presence, he does it all. The glory goes to him. You know, we are just swept away by what God wants to do. Uh, that, is the, that is the picture. Uh, swept away by the current. Wow. God uses us. Again, that's a, a good picture because, like, when you're swept away by the current, are you going in the same direction as the water? Yes, you are. Are you propelling yourself? No, you're not. You're just being carried by the water. And this is the picture that David has of God's victory. God did it. He came through as a breach of waters. It's like, wow. I went to God and I said, Lord, shall I go up against the Philistines? And, and, and God said, go up. That's the first time, basically. 
read the second time when he says, don't go up. Uh, we'll come to that in a minute. But it's like, yeah, go up against the Philistines. And it's going to be like, I'm going to sweep along. I'm going to carry you. I'm going to take you to where you want to, you want to be. And I'm going to do everything that is needed. This is the picture of our God. And this is also a picture of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because so often we, we strive on in our own goodness, in our own righteousness, in our own good works, in our own tr trying to be a good person and keep the laws and things like that. And God says, no. There's a picture here of uh, a dam breaking when the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life at Calvary it was like a dam breaking and water flooding out and that is the picture that we have here and that was how it was for us could we do anything to, to heal ourselves to forgive ourselves to make amends for our wickedness for our sins for our, our failings could we undo them could we turn back time no none of that is possible but a God who picks us up and sweeps us forward and says, hey, no, you're just going to be carried along. I'm going to do it all. And you just ride along on the current. That is my victory. And everything else is going to be wa washed away. Everything else is going to be wiped clean. And... Uh, and we see that, that what happens there is that the Philistines, are, I love that part of the story, they're in such a, a hurry to go that they leave their gods behind, they leave their idols behind. Dagon was one of those, the fish-headed god, if you remember that. Um, and uh, when the Ark of the Covenant was taken into the house of Dagon, he fell forward and broke his head off. And uh, they wouldn't go in there after that. They wouldn't tread on the, on the on the threshold after that, because of it. Well, here they leave whether it, it was the same gods because they had more than one god. I think of the Philistines. Um, whether they whether it was statues of Dagon or whether it was statues of other gods, they left them all behind. And I love this that, that David just scoops them all up and burns them. And that's it. It's over. It's done. Uh, this is what we think of the the other gods, the gods that have no power. You know, if their gods really have power, then stop them being burnt. Can they do that? No, they can't. So, uh, you know, there's two things there. There's the god who sweeps David along, and uh, and he's able to do things uh, that miraculously uh, far beyond human power but then there's also the interesting thing that the human power that David has on his own right is still greater than the false gods that's quite a thought isn't it as well that the, the false gods were so powerless the idols were so powerless that actually David had more power over them on his own with or without God's help he you know, he didn't say the Lord told him to go and burn them David just decided that and you know man made uh, ideologies man made um, theology religion man made philosophy you know what it only has the power of man in it so a spirit-filled believer is able to clear it away. He is able to deal with it. Uh, praise the Lord. We go to God, we ask for his power. And we are over and above uh, anything that this world can throw at us. Never worry, never be f afraid of the world, uh, the world system and its powers and its uh, its ideas they're never going to come against the power of the living God uh, so yeah so that's the first part of the story and then we come on to the second part 
where you know it says uh, there is a shall I go up against the Philistines again and this time God says no don't well, hang on a minute what's going to happen but it's not no don't ever it's just not now and not in the way that you think because God says I actually have a better plan than your plan uh, and it says fetch your compass now we have this idea now uh, maybe of him going to his like stationary cupboard and getting a little thing out <laughs> to draw, draw a circle with or or, or maybe going down to this sort of the the camping shop and getting a getting a thing that will will point to the which which way is north. But that's not what it's saying actually. It's the old archaic language of the King James version. Uh, fetch your compass. It means actually go around the back, circle around. as we said this morning, you know, maybe lay an ambush, or maybe uh, go round to the other side, circle round to the, to, the, to the other way. Here's the thing, we go to God and we say, Lord, I have this problem. The Philistines are camped, the enemy is camped against me. What do I do about it? And there are times when, 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 like the first time, God will just say, yeah, just go up against them, and I'll be with you. And there are other times when God says, hey, no, involve me in the plan, and you'll see a whole new perspective on things. Fetch your compass, turn the situation around. Go around the back, go around the other way. Look at it from a completely different angle. Uh, this is what the Spirit of God brings in. It's like, no, it's not just this straightforward, well, this is what you do, this is how you do it. But it's actually, no, I am the Lord. I have a whole new perspective on things. I have a whole new way to look at it. And you involve me, you trust me, you go with my plan. You will come at it from a completely different place. And you'll come at it from a completely unexpected angle. And it'll surprise the enemy as well. And that's what it, uh, happens there. David goes around to the other side, to the back of the mulberry trees. And God says, when you hear the sound of going in the tops of the trees, then the Lord is going to go before you. And I think about that. We look up. We always look up, and we always look up to see what God is doing. But God is actually going to give a signal and a sign and say, Hey, when you see this, when you this is when this happens, then you will know. And you'll say, Well, does God still do that today? Well, God can still do that today. You know, think about this with the disciples. Remember that when, you know, like. Where are we going to spend the Passover? Well, go and see this. You'll go into the city. As you're going in there, you'll probably see this guy who will be coming carrying a water pot. And follow him and see where he goes. Now, Jesus could have just sort of said, no, you go there, you, you, know, you take, take, take the first left, third right, you know. And it, you know or I've, I've, I've made a reservation at this house, and it's at this address, and I'll give you the postcode so you can put it in your sat nav. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, no. Follow this guy. That's the easiest way. Now think about that from the p disciples' point of view. That's a crazy way, you know. Well, what if there's no guy with a water pot? What if he doesn't show up? What if, but God no knows what's happening. He's arranged it all. And the Lord Jesus Christ was able to do that with confidence and say, No, follow the guy with the water pots and he'll take you to the right place. Not talk to him not ask him not sort of oh you know just watch where he goes and go that way and it's like wow but that is that is the way that god does things hey wait i'll give you a sign follow this way 
do it my way trust my uh, trust my way think about this we were talking about this this morning in our wrap after the service really um, and Mary asked the question, the question about end times and you know we see certain events and certain signs of end times and when we see certain events happening and certain nations doing certain things well we again we know that actually it's a good signal to us that the stage in history that we're at and maybe the stage that we're at with God's return with the Lord Jesus Christ coming for his church so the point is this we look at God's word but as we said this morning we also ask God's spirit because it's all very well to have all the things nicely mapped out but for David what was key was ask God, involve God be in touch with his spirit and when the time is right the spirit of the Lord will make known and he will say now go now this is the time, this is the place, this is the way I'm going to do it trust me, wait for the right time do it my way follow the instructions but actually it's not the way that you would have done it it's not the straightforward way it's, uh, it's my plan it's my perfect world for the situation and we see that again when, um, when it comes to uh, reading God's word we, we often see things there in there that maybe we've never seen before we often see things in there that we didn't notice before and we realise wow God's giving me a little heads up here in my relationship with him He's telling me something. He's telling me, focus on this. And it might not even be um, the way that we think it would be. Uh, I know that over the years God has, has, has given me the, um, the uh, nudging to do certain things. And you think, well, why, why would I do that? Why would I do that? doesn't make any sense but we do it and then we realize actually it's part of God's plan uh, and it's like well God is in it he's faithful and he wants us to to have the best of his plan his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts when we see Calvary it's not man's way it's not even a way of logic it's not even a way of uh, of human viewpoint but it, it's God's perfect plan my son will die for mankind the just will die for the unjust the price of sin will be paid for by someone who does not owe it themselves it's the wisdom of God it's not our thinking it's not our wisdom but it's God's heart and it's God's perfect plan and our part is to trust it to ask God well what should we do what is the plan and when God makes his plan known is to act upon it David could have said mulberry trees you know what's the point of that what's, the, what's God going on about mulberry trees for you know it's not no we need to be attacking the enemy but no, God will say, nah, you, you'll, you will know the time is right. You will know, you, I'll give you a sign. You will hear something in the trees. And you'll know that it's the time. And also, what is it? It's like, well, it's me. It's the Spirit of the Lord going before you to gain the victory. And David knew from his past experience, it's like, well, like a, a breach of waters, God will come through and it'll be just like a cascade. And I'll be carried and I trust him. So I trusted him before. So even though this time he asks me to do it differently, and even though it, 
this time he asks me to do the, the opposite of what we did before I'm still going to trust him that's one of the things I also love about God's word is we see that time and time again that at no two situations are ever the same are they smite the rock Moses now this time no, don't smite it but speak to it or well, I'll just go and do the same thing again. no it's a different situation listen to God different place different time and uh, your relationship with me is key are you going to listen to what I said or are you going to do your own thing healings as well it's like how does, the, how does Jesus heal people with a touch with a word sometimes with an action sometimes with clay sometimes he doesn't even have to be there he just says the word uh, remotely how do you heal someone well it's different every time why because people are different every time the situation is different every time God is not a recipe God is not a formula God is not just a series of rules it's a relationship that's what the Philistines didn't understand but they're idols but that's what David did understand that's why he kept going back to God and saying is this right shall I go up against the Philistines well of course what do you think I'm going to say now lead the Philistines there actually let the Philistines have rule but actually God does say don't go up but not so that they, they have rule but actually so that they get a surprise God has a way let's pray Heavenly Father we just thank you tonight Lord thank you that you're the God who, who has a plan who has a plan to surprise us and thank you Lord that you are like a, a cascade of waters when you come through you wash everything else away in your path you make everything plain you carry us along in your power and we go exactly where you need us to go thank you Lord that we can trust you we can rely on you thank you Lord that you desire a relationship with us more than anything else Lord we just pray that you give us the wisdom to seek your face about everything and the integrity to act on it in the way that you say and the way that you tell us the obedience and the humility to trust you in all of these things thank you Lord because your ways are perfect your ways are far better and we love you and Lord we just pray as well tonight if there's anyone watching out there who has never trusted you as their saviour and doesn't know what it's like to have that complete trust in a loving God in the living God then Lord we just pray that you just this will be the time when they could say Lord I need you I'm a failure I'm weak I make mistakes but I need someone to make things right and I want to be carried along I don't want to struggle along in myself I don't want to keep making my own plans and failing in them but I want the power of the living God to sort it all out for me make things right and I trust you as my saviour in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, we're going to leave it there for tonight. Um, we will see you again soon. God willing, see some people down in London or on the way down. Uh, and if not, hopefully see you all back here again in a couple of weeks' time. Take care, God bless, and bye for now.